Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So we are gonna carve this today. I'm gonna to put a free um, link to it. You can sort of download it yourself and follow along if you want or do it afterwards or however you wanna do it. Uh, it's a simplified version of the carving that I have done previously and that had a moon in it and that was quite complex. So I've kind of simplified this. As you can see, it's a female face and we're gonna carve it into this board so it's not that thick, about three quarters of an inch. Okay, so first things first, we want to put the pattern onto the wood. I'm going to have the grain going downwards. Let's put a bit of tape on there, done a bit of a fold at the top. And so that fold will go onto the top there. Make sure it's sitting on the wood. Yep, and then just put that tape so it won't move while you're you're drawing it. So I have got some carbon paper there. And we can put that back. Maybe put that like that. Just that where it goes. What I've done also is you could actually speed things up if you have a compass. That dot in the middle is See if that worked. Oh yep, yeah, look at that. Okay, and it's a good idea to use a red pen because uh, you can see where you've been. Okay, so once you have finished that, you'll want to cut out the circle and you can do that either with a sort of like a coping saw, which is a manual saw, sort of like this. Uh, I didn't have uh, a lot of luck with that because the table was moving around a lot. Or you could use a bandsaw, but because this is quite soft wood, you could probably use a scroll saw as well. And if you've got any builder friends, you could probably ask them uh, for a hand and just cut out the circle for you. And I find what happens with carving is sometimes you'll carve out the lines. So I've been putting in these points for reference, and so you just squish them in because we're going to be carving back into that. And because we'll carve out those lines, those points will stay for a while longer. You might have to renew them, but I'm just sort of like looking at the uh, work now. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to leave as the highest point. And it's going to be the nose. And I've put uh, the carving up as a reference up in the top left hand corner. So you can sort of see where we are heading and what I'm kind of talking about now. And it's sort of like where it's going to go to. So I'm just using the Cutsaw Sphere Burr there and just putting in sort of like trying to work out where everything's going to go. Uh, those are going to be the cheeks. So I just sort of like put them in there just to show you where I think they're going to go. Maybe they're going to be a bit lower. I think with female faces you've got to be very careful to sort of have everything kind of smooth and no kind of sharp lines. And you can sort of see in the final one it's quite... Um, everything flows into each other there's no sort of like the brow line is not really uh, deep or anything like that and what I tend to do is with the eyes is I will carve around the eyes and just leave them protruding like that and by leaving them protruding you always have a lot of material to play with especially in these sort of like relief carvings because you can't really carve too deep on these so everything's going to be quite close to the surface and it's just going to sort of be um i guess what would you say what would you say you're sort of like trying to work out at the beginning how everything is going to work together and so you sort of go down gradually and sort of accentuate things sort of like uh around the nostril and all that to go deeper a little bit there but if you were to go in really quickly and put those really deep lines in it's going to be tougher to compensate uh, for that because you can't like go deeper on the other parts so we swapped over here to the taper burr because uh, the sphere burr was just a little bit too wide to get to go deeper into that sort of area there and because we've lost those points of reference, I'm going to put them in again. I put might put some more in. I might put one on the pupil, uh, the uh, yeah, the pupil, so you can sort of see where I've put them there. And now we're going to sort of round out the eye, and 
sort of just work on the eye now. So what I do is I round it out um, into an oval. Actually, uh, it's not what it's going to like look like in the end, but I just find that the oval is quite easy to deal with at the start. And then I round the pupil a little bit later on. As you can see in sort of like the diagram, it's quite round. The actual pupil sort of like falls back in to the corners of the eye. Now we're going to work on the nose. And with the female nose, it's a lot softer than a male nose. It's sort of um, that curve right there is a lot, I guess, on, on here it's going to be shallower. But like it's not sort of like sharp coming down off the forehead. It's more rounded. So you can see it there on the right hand side. That's a sort of close up of the finished nose. So it's sort of going just a little way back and then coming out. So I've got the general shape of the nose in and I'm going in with the Sphere Burr from Cutsel again. That's a fine burr. Uh, and if you want to buy any Cutsel burrs, uh, there's a 5% discount if you go to the affiliated link in the description. And that kind of helps me out as well. So I am just putting in some more reference points because I lost them. And so that's the middle that's the pupil there so I can go off that pupil from the diagram and work out where that line is there so I can scribe that line in and that will give me a reference point for the inner eyelid the one closest to the nose you can sort of see it just there and then I will take the line going up to the top of the eyelid from the pupil and put that in what's really good about this is your eyes will end up uh, quite symmetrical if you sort of like take points and sort of go from there so I'm just freehand drawing it in sort of connecting the dots And then I will go in with that diamond burr there and I'm just going to put in that top eyelid, the very top of the eyelid, not the part that's on the pupil, but the part that's connected to sort of like the uh, eyebrow, I guess, or the, the brow. And so that sort of like puts it in line and you can sort of see I'm kind of using the top of that burr too, sort of to smooth out. Um, so it's giving a line and also smoothing it out to the thing. So then I flipped over that burr and now I am sort of smoothing out the top of the eyelid. And then I will use the edge of that burr to put in the line of the eyelid that connects to the pupil. So you can sort of see there I'm going very slowly and just sort of like slowly putting it in I'm not going really deep or anything like that because I kind of want to always be aware that that might not be the final place that it's going to go so I put it in and what I am doing here is I am lowering the pupil because it's sticking a little bit too far out and the bottom eyelid wants to be further back into the face than the top eyelid not by much but it's sort of a little bit further back so I'm going to reduce the protrusion, it's a big word, protrusion of the eyelid, I mean of the eye, and then go from there. So you can sort of see there, it's still very oval, the eye. And you can actually use the top of that burr to smooth out the actual pupil as well. So we're sort of getting somewhere here. So quite happy with how that top eyelid is looking. And you can use the, the top of the burr to smooth out the eyelid as well. You can sort of see, see a few sort of like chunks there that were taken out. So we just smooth that out. And I'm really sort of going back into the corners there a little bit more. And whenever you go back into the corners, then go back and take the eyelids back as well, as otherwise it will look really fat at the corners. And I'm just going around with the sphere burrs, sort of like sorting out uh, the surrounding part of the eyes. 
Yeah, a little bit of the cheeks there as well. And then I'll go back into the eyes and maybe put in the pupils. So I've just drawn in the pupils there. And I use that burr there to do the pupils. And I sort of like press it and then sort of like you'll get an indentation and you kind of like work it sort of like a little bit on each side until it sort of like gets bigger to the size that you want it. You have to be very careful here. So there you go. I'm pretty happy with that. And you might sort of take that burr and just get rid of the rough edges around the pupil as well. And it's really just sort of like tidying the eye up then. And I've gone in with a sphere burr there. It's a tiny little diamond one and just putting in the pupil. Okay, so let's move away from those and I am putting a line around the outside on where I'm going to carve those flames back to. Well, not the flames, but the outside of the flames. And you can do this with a few different kind of burrs. I'm using a cutter burr here. Uh, with cutter burrs, you want to be quite careful with them. You don't want to use them too much because it blunts them. Um, so I'd probably, probably recommend actually using a flame burr here. Okay, so we're using the flame burr here. It's working pretty well. I'm using kind of the point to get close to the lines. And you can sort of see how I'm moving the carving and not so much sort of my hand on the right. And so I'm sort of like looking at the depth as well. And you'll notice my hand on the right is on a bit of foam. I tend to do that as well because it moves around a lot easier and you can put a bit of pressure onto the table to hold it stable. And here I'm just putting it in the flames, sort of like taking it back to the level of the face a little bit and then putting a bit of contouring into the flames. Okay, so check this out. I have got a package from Amazon uh, and it's a pretty big package, but uh, what's inside is actually quite small. <laughs> so, and they are new beers and they are actually pretty good. I've only used them for the eyes, but what I like about them is they are diamond beers, but they have a real thin sort of profile and they're really really good to get into the sort of like under the eyelids of the eyes you can sort of see I'm using one of them here and I'll put a link to that those burrs in the description so you can sort of see I'm going under the eyelid a little bit I tend to leave going under the eyelid until the very last because you sort of don't want to do that before you maybe you might change the profile of the eyelid and if you've got a big undercut under there it's going to be a little bit more difficult and it's really good to use the top of that burr as well to smooth out the surface of the pupil okay so let's get on to carving the lips uh, this is going to be hard as well because if you think of your mouth it sort of goes back it falls back around the jaw but we're carving this onto a flat surface so we're going to try and put in a little bit of a curve going back but we can't put in too much okay so just putting in the general shape of the mouth so it'll be falling back into the cheeks now I'm not going to go too far else it'll look uh, slightly weird so you want to keep on things keeping smooth and not sort of like really really a protruding kind of mouth as well and I'll redraw that mouth in now so I always put a center line in and you can sort of go from the diagram then you might want to um, put points in if you want to that's up to you okay so for this carving I put the uh, middle part of the lips in first with that diamond burr and then I use the top of it to sort of like round up that topper, top, the top lip. And 
And don't worry if it looks a little bit flat at the moment because you can always round it off later. So I'm going to actually put in the bottom lip now and you actually put in like how I put the bottom lip in is that I define it by going up under the chin onto the bottom of the bottom lip. So you can sort of see here I've got the Cutsall Fine Taper Burr and I'm just sort of like putting in a line under it and so, so that sort of makes that lip kind of stick out. And you can kind of see the bottom lip is too long so I'm just going to fine shape that up with that Cutsall Burr as well so I'm going to go in where that is and that line is and take that out so it'll shape that bottom lip up. And then you can sort of start rounding the corners. I've sort of got a a flame cutter burr there. You could use it all sorts here. You could use a diamond burr as well. So I'm just sort of sort of rounding off that bottom lip, and I'll adjust that uh, how I see fit. It's sort of like uh, maybe round it off and then take up the bottom a little bit as well. And I'm just sort of like rounding off the top part of the lip. I'm trying to sort of like maybe go back into a bit more of a smile so sort of upturning those lips because you know it was kind of like uh, looked a little bit angry I guess. You don't want to make those lines um, in the far corners too wide either. And you can sort of see on these lips that I made before, uh, you, you've kind of like, the line isn't straight across the lips, sort of goes up, like a little bit of a W, so you can sort of go in and put that in as well. And I'm just using a po pointed diamond burr for that. And you can put lines into lips as well that sort of uh, makes it look a little bit more realistic and sort of like differentiates it from the skin surrounding it. Okay, so when it comes to sanding, I tend to go in uh, with the biggest thing I have that is appropriate for the sanding of the work. And these are little disc sanders, so you're not going to get into everywhere with this. So I'll just do maybe like the cheeks and the forehead and maybe in between the flames as well with those. That disc sander there. And then I'll go in with something smaller, say this uh, nice little diamond burr. And you can sort of see how that one's got a bit of a cone on it. So you need to sort of like maneuver the burr depending on the shape you're going for. So it's really good for getting in between there and to the nose and all of that kind of stuff. So the everything's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this carving. And these kind of burrs, I think they're rated at 150 grit, so you still got capabilities here of actually shaping with this burr as well. And that set of burrs that I got also has this quite wide kind of burr here that it was actually really good for getting in between the flames and sort of putting a sort of line in between the flame and the back of the uh, board I guess you'd say the back of the timber and I've just put a still image of that finished part in between the flames that I did with those burrs so it's got that real nice definition line between the back and the flame so pretty much finished now I might sort of give it a hand sand to take off like the edges of the flames and all that kind of stuff I'm not really too worried about really, really fine finishes. Okay, so I'm going to point out a few things that I noticed along the way. Uh, the eye is very stylized and sort of like putting in those curves at the end and sort of making things look a little bit bigger, makes it more look like a female eye. Uh, you can see there I'm pointing at the spherical nature and taking their eyelid back along the eyeball so it's not sticking out too far so just thin that out once you've thinned sort of like taken the pupil back into a sphere 
I put in an eyebrow there as well. Maybe I kind of rate this as sort of more of a intermediate carving, just because it kind of looks easy, but because you're always fighting between sculpture and that flat plane, it's actually quite difficult to get things looking kind of correct. There's a flat plane there. It looks great from the front, don't get me wrong. But hey, uh, thank you everybody for watching, and if you could hit the like button, that would be awesome as well. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, the making of the sun.